you. Well, hey y'all, and welcome back. So today we have a very special review. We have Leader Class Ultra Magnus from the Siege on Cybertron series. Now this line, if you're not familiar with it, is the new line that has just started dropping from Hasbro. And what it is, is sort of a G1 take on Cybertron battle. They are Cybertron modes, but they do have a little bit of the G1 Earth mode aesthetic to them. So what we have here is Ultra Magnus, and this is his standard robot mode, unarmored. He is not packaged this way, but I want to start with this way because I think it's sort of key to where we're going. Before we jump into that, let's check out these new boxes that Hasbro has given us. Now, just for comparison, this is the Deluxe Class Hound uh, packaging, and you can see how the Leader Class mimics the same design, but it's a different size. So it's really neat they sort of uniform the packaging in that respect. What we have here, and it seems to be pretty same on both of them. Get this out of the way just for the sake of showing the example. So we have logos, uh, the character's name. They have a nice little backdrop they throw in the back that seems pretty universal across them, uh, as far as I can tell. What's nice, it also kind of hides the uh, instructions. It just gives it a nice little area to put the instructions so they don't get damaged when you're taking things out. Have this really neat illustration of Ultra Magnus here. Then we have this sort of... I guess it's almost like one, you might want to call it like the movie poster for the series on all the packages, at least I've gotten so far. And then on the back, and here you can see his combined mode, his robot, his vehicle mode, which of course is not G1 inspired, it has influences from other series, but it's neat that they've sort of mixed everything. But enough with the packaging, you get the packaging, you get all the accessories, and we get what's actually kind of a large... Um, instruction sheet compared to what we've seen with a lot of the uh, the other figures. Something that's nice to see come back. And it's uniform in style with how they're doing everything else. So they've kept it across the board. But anyway, back to the figure. Now, when he, the way he scales with the uh, deluxe figures might be somewhat of a disappointment to some people because when you look at him, he's a leader size figure. But in a way, it's a Voyager that turns into a leader figure. But we'll get into more of that later. Uh, these two figures, well, I haven't done a review on them. Pretty awesome figures. Cog, if you're going to get this line, is a must. While he's, he does have a couple of shortcomings, he is an ultimate accessory for this line. Because one thing that is key about this line, and we'll be, we'll be visiting him quite a bit, is that this line has a lot of ports on it. And these ports are designed to add on weapons that you can buy as sets, or uh, like bots like Cog, you could add to it. So he has port here at his ankle, port at his forearm, port at his shoulder, single port on his back, and then ports on his feet. And that's going to allow for some combined modes. Now, what I want to do, and the reason I started in this mode, is I wanted to give him a direct comparison to the Classics figure, because that has been the only real Ultra Magnus I feel like that we've gotten in this line. And that wasn't even completed by Hasbro, I've used this as my city commander for a long time, thanks to Fans Project. This became a desired figure, I got the armor for him, and we're going to be talking about Fans Project quite a bit in this one, because there is a lot of similarities between how these are sort of assembled and carry on throughout each other. As far as the aesthetic goes, you can see he's a bit more chunky, he's a bit blockier, especially in this midsection, but he has some nice dynamic new engineering. Even the interior mode has ankle tilt, which is nice. The, I like how this back foot comes out and gives him more stability. So this was incorporated in the original design, but it was always out. Uh, we have nice sharp knee bend, tilt the ankle, rotation at the hip, which is by a mushroom peg here. We have full outward on the hip, forward, nice clicky sounds. Things that you would expect from a higher end figure instead of just friction joints. Then at the waist, we have rotation. Shoulders, full rotation there, outward movement, elbow joint, swivel with the bicep, swivel at the wrists, which I am glad to have on this figure. Uh, then we go to the neck. We have a ball joint in the neck, can look around as much as you can with such a big blocky chest, but this is a really cool mode. And I mean, comparing these two, this is still a solid figure. This is a figure that probably most people should have in their collection. However, the update, other than perhaps the really blocky torso, uh, I think in all ways is better. Um, I think this, this head sculpt is brilliant. 
I think it's very dynamic. It does have a little bit of a backpack, but they both do. And the engineering is pretty interesting, and we'll get into that some as well. So, what I want to talk about first, uh, let's talk about accessories, because even though they're meant for the combined mode, these accessories can be put anywhere, and that's because of this peg system. So we have his standard blaster that we've become familiar, familiar with, with Ultra Magnus throughout all his incarnations. And then he has these two new guns, which are really neat. Um, and they could be used in different configurations. So I'm going to assume they're more of a like non-combined mode weapon, but you can mount on his shoulders. And this shoulder mount here, I would say, is probably a little strange, because, or at least with this weapon, because you kind of have to find a way to make things fit. Uh, those smokestacks are going to be in the way. It's a minor gripe, but just something to be aware of when you're trying to set up your configurations. And then we have these ankle things. And that actually also runs into similar issues, because it's going to limit certain things you can have because he has this additional clip down here. But you can make things work. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to pop COG apart, and then we can see how that incorporates in this mode. And COG, uh, and there's other figures like him coming out in this line as well, definitely something, if you want to collect this line, to really consider. And you, you saw COG in his combined mode, or his robot mode, but there's some pretty typical combinations you can do with him uh, that you'll see staring on all the robots, because they all sort of have a back peg. So you can throw a backpack on there, which of course with this already extended backpack is going to add some weight to the back of this figure. And so we'll, we'll just do a couple of the pretty typical uh, combinations. So we'll throw these in the shoulders. And we could do, actually, I bet if we, if we played around with it enough, we could probably find sort of an Ultra Magnus mode with the rocket launchers. Uh, might be a little tricky since there's not a side peg here, but I'm sure that if you fill it around, I, I have found some really creative combinations uh, with these figures. And so, and then you've got the toe pegs. Might be easier to fold that in. Okay. And so it allows for some pretty fun. Uh, play factors with this line, that you can take these other figures and sort of use them in a way that allows you to make more interesting combined modes. So even in that self, you can kind of produce an armor mode for this. Even if they had released this figure like this, I think a lot of people would have been happy just because you have a Prime-inspired Ultra Magnus that, you know, someone would make an armor for, but also with all the add-ons this set has, you could make some sort of armor for. But as a robot, and let's, let's look at the back real quick, uh, since we didn't really spend a lot of time on that. The back is fairly clean. We do have this blue backpack, but I think it's fine. I think it stands out. Uh, it's almost sort of like just a munitions pack or something like that. And that has a really, really interesting transformation uh, engineered into it, and that's something we'll go into when we go into vehicle mode. But first, let's go into armor mode. That's something that's going to definitely tie back to how I was referencing fans projects before, because more or less, it's how the armor goes on fans project. And what we can do, we can go ahead and start with the ankles, fold the hill spurs in, and then you just snap the leg in there. Done. It is much easier than fans projects, but it is essentially the same concept. You're just shelling uh, this transformer with parts of a trailer. And that may disappoint some people, the fact that it's not a whole trailer that just transforms in a way, that it parts forms, but I think that is fine with this. And there's, of course, since you can do it that way, that lends itself to have different configurations. And one thing to note, I did throw that armor on here. It, nothing snaps on. But what's interesting is how close things are, because if you put the feet down, you could actually slide the legs partway over. Um, you put the head down, you can rest the head on top. It's kind of neat how close things sort of fall in line and how much they do sort of reference each other. So there's one key piece of transformation on the actual robot itself um, for this mode. So his crotch folds down, twists, and folds back up. 
can we get a new belt line there? Which is really kind of neat that they incorporated that. Even though it's not a snap-on item, I do think it's more stable the fact that it's actually part of the core bot. And we don't lose the waist articulation by doing that. And one of the things that's fun, and I'm really going to look into testing this when I have it, it come in, uh, when I get the Optimus Prime figure, the Voyager mold, my intentions are to see if this armor works on him. Um, I don't know how closely related those two, these two molds will be. Uh, they, they do look different, but I'm wondering if scale-wise they are very similar. And that might allow for possible repaints in the future of a Diaclone version. If that, if the, if the Voyager Optimus Prime fits, it'd be really cool if there was a repaint for Diaclone with this particular trailer. Don't know if it's going to work. I am going to test it when it comes in. And then shoulders, just like the Fans Project ones, they snap on. And it's kind of neat, neat to see how it sort of comes together as you do it. It lends itself to a lot of different configurations. And then we have our rocket launchers that he's famous for on the shoulders. And honestly, I don't know if this is going to be the last Ultra Magnus we see. I really doubt it. Uh, considering, actually, I'll leave off for a moment. Considering in the last Combiner Wars one was very G1 in vehicle mode, but the robot mode was more IDW, and now we have one that is using a different alt mode, but more G1 configuration robot mode. It's safe to say that someday we'll probably get one that is all G1. But for now, I think this is a pretty awesome thing to mess with. Now, one thing we have to do here, I probably should have done it before I put the shoulders on, or is make the head go away. And I really think this is clever engineering. So the shoulders pop back, which the first time doing it was actually really tricky. There we go. And the chest folds down, the head folds back, snaps together, and the arms clip on. And these arms were extremely difficult to snap off the first time. Um, I had to double check with the instructions a few times just because I did not want to risk breakage. And once you get everything on there, it is pretty stable, but of course, doing that transformation, uh, getting the chest out, is such a resistant transformation that it may cause a little bit of, uh, you know, parts to fall off. Then we have our final piece here. And this is, if you look at the Fans Project version, very similar to how it snaps on the top. Um, the Fans Project did have these interesting clips that went underneath, and of course, a bit more streamlined chest. But of course, but we do get this wonderful G1 thing here. Actually, right before we do that, I need to show you this interesting piece of engineering. So this thing here is a backpack at the moment. It is going to become a butt flap. And what we have is this torso can go forward and back, but you want to make sure it's all lined up. And what's going to happen is it's going to shift from the, to from the back itself to the rear of the uh, lower back. And this is still probably one of the trickier pieces to transform. It's, it's not the smoothest engaging thing, but it's still very clever at how they've allowed us to have this transformation that shifts from one rotating component to another. So we do still get to keep that torso rotation, but as you see here, it becomes a butt flap. And now, what we do is we can move this, let's see. Okay, so I believe it's locked into place. Now we can put this back piece here, which has a clip, and then get it snapped in there securely. There we go. So you heard the click. Still not super secure, though. Make sure there's no interference. Okay, no, it, it is secure. It just does have some looseness. And then on the chest here, there's these two divots and it just pegs in there. And then we have a glorious looking Ultra Magnus. And what's great is it's retained all of that posability. It uses the same hands. The feet have, have its own tilt, which is nice. Use the same knee, but we, I mean, so even though we have the same posability, we do get some interference. 
so the, the leg is not going to go back as far. Leg can go forward, but it's not going to, the hip's not going to go back as far because of the butt flap. Still have rotation, which is great. Arm movement is not hindered, which is nice. Uses the same hands, so those have retained everything. I'm a little bit mixed reviews on using the same hands. Um, I think it's fine. I think this combined mode is really great looking, though. Uh, back looks pretty clean. I like how they've handled the panels and the vents back here on the, his lats. Uh, and then the butt flap. The butt flap is what it is. I think we've sort of gotten used to them on Ultra Magnuses. Uh, the white you can see inside, but it doesn't really stand out. It's not glaring because it matches the plastic that's on the armor. Um, overall, I mean, this is what we have wanted for a long time. This is what we've pay, been trying to pay third parties to produce for a long time. And I think Hasbro has really finally delivered in this respect. We have gotten what is an excellent robot mode. And just for comparison, we can move him over here and put him by City Commander. And I will always love Fan Project City Commander armor. I think it's got a great aesthetic. It's um, was the real first taste of the G1 Ultra Magnus. Very stylized, very interesting. It, it's a solid figure and it's a piece of third party history. But Hasbro has retained articulation. And of course they designed the whole thing from the inside out. They've captured the look. They've got all the elements. It's their style that they've continued from all the generations in this, where this one is its own influence. So if you have this one and you're like, I already have one, show you another one. It's sort of like having two different pieces entirely. And there's two different form factors and two different experiences where the third party one is something for display. Uh, even though it's robust, it's still a display item. The Hasbro item is very much something to fiddle with. It seems durable and poseable and very robust. So some of the things I want to go over just because I think it's going to be important to some of our viewers is scale. Now this is a leader class figure. And these are leader class figures from the previous line. And you can see he's not very big. But if you're a person like me who is used to buying third-party stuff, this does fit within a price point that is acceptable for its size. But it is not as big as you're used to. So this is definitely something you're going to have to accept if you consider the scale in relation to other previous generations that we've been collecting. This is a new line. Wouldn't really consider it as meshable with the other generations as maybe some might like. It's sort of set to collect on its own and incorporate together with its own specific line. But that said, the cab mode and all that really isn't far off from the vehicle mode in this. We just have a tall gen Generi. And if you consider the Combiners War Ultra Magnus, it is going to be shrinking down from that because this is sort of very, very retooled version of that mold uh, to give you kind of an idea of where that's coming from. So if that's important to you, just want to throw that there for everyone to consider. But let's get these out, out of the way and just quickly go over the ports because this does continue that wonderful port system. We have two over here on the shoulder. We have two on the side where the missiles are. We have one on the back, just like all the others. On the forearms, each forearm has one. On the side of the legs, we have one here. And we also have two on the bottom of the feet. Now, while this is something that's a bit too small, I feel like for this mold, it does make me wonder if we're going to be seeing more components come out that might go along with these guys uh, for combining. So definitely something to think about when you're buying this. That is continuing the form factor. And they seem to really be expanding on this line, so it's definitely something uh, to think about when you're collecting it. So anyway, that is the combined mode, robot mode, all that. Let's get into the vehicle mode. So popping the armor off, just the reverse of what we saw comes off easy enough to where it's not a hassle. Fold that chest piece up and then we can fold it up, snap it off the back, which I feel that there should be a better way to do this, but it does just clip on that spine. And what you see here is that the chest piece actually moves forward. That's actually going to be part of the transformation we're going to have to consider. Pop off the sleeves. Same over here. 
And some people still have mixed feelings about the distressed uh, paint effect that's on here. I think it's fine. Um, I don't hate it or love it. I think it's fine, though. I'm glad they're at least trying to give us something interesting uh, in more painted detail. Which, for the most part, where there is paint, it is really nice. No stickers. So, for this vehicle mode, we already have the head down. Chest is forward. So we have this space between the spine. And we could go ahead and flip that. It doesn't really matter, but that does go back into normal robot mode. So, spread the legs apart. There's a peg here on the front of the crotch. You want to move them forward around that, and then you can snap them together. So with the heels first folded in, that is already the back part, the fifth wheel section of that. We do have a gap. That is just how it is. And you see that I've pushed the chest forward. And so what you see here, have the butt flap that's come forward. This part's locked up. So now we're going to do the arms. We want to snap them apart from the side. We want to move them, let's see, we want to move them down and forward. And then it's all going to snap in. You see the peg down here from the shoulder. And there is our truck mode, which I can already hear people saying about the fists. The fists are terrible. This is, even though it's a Cybertronian, tr Cybertronian truck mode, everything about it I think is fine. But these fists are not right. They should have designed some sort of mechanism in here to where you could have opened up the arm and folded the fist in. I do not like the open fists. There's not a whole lot of things you can do to make it look better. Now, this is not intended to be a truck on its own. He has a trailer, but it's still a truck. And so you have to find a way to make it work. And your probably best bet is to put, if you're just going to have as a truck, to put the guns on it, to put something on it to hide those fists, uh, which are unfortunate. And I think out of everything that we've seen so far, those fists are the worst part. Um, not everyone's going to love the, love the truck mode. I think it's fine. But those fists, they're terrible. So anyway, since we've seen that this is all a ports farmer, now it's time to put together the trailer. And the first thing we'll start with is the shoulder. So let's go ahead and take the missiles out. Snap these panels down. And then... We just snap this together. What I kind of like is that rather than being pushed in, it's meant to be slid in, like a mushroom peg. And I feel like that's going to have less stress on the plastic and be more stable overall. So we have this piece like this. Take our forearms, close them up. Everything's sort of just strewn about here. Take the head piece. You can push through here and fold this down and then fold this flat. So then we have it looking like that. Then we can take these and use the peg system to peg them on. Actually, peg them on to where the long side goes towards the head. So that's going to be the long extended side will be center. Okay, so take this in pegs, and the whole thing extends like that, where we have the legs nicely fold out to be the whole side of the truck. And okay, so then we can take this and this, and you've got a peg here, 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 here. So it's just a matter of lining everything up and getting it in its own groove, and you just work from the back and slowly move forward. And everything slowly. I mean, look how, how those two pieces so easily and nicely combine to be the back of the trailer. I mean, we're not done, but they've really thought efficiently by using part forming. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll just extend this and just make it match the other side. Thank you. 
it's really just a matter of making sure it all lines up. Now the last piece here, so I mean, it is simple. It is a simple trailer, it is all parts. If it was a full trailer, we might expect uh, that there may be a bit more mass, and maybe that is something we need to sacrifice, a functional trailer, for the sake of a better looking robot mode. So let's go ahead and take these guns off here, because they're not essential. And what we have here is this component we built, and it snaps on down here. And then what we should be able to do is it all... Okay, we've got these pegs down here uh, in the back of the feet. It will all lock in like so. So that sort of gives stability there. Then we can take this piece here, snap it down, and then you can see these other areas, like the clips on the side here, And it's really, it's really just a matter of feel. It's not overly complicated. And there we have a space bus. Uh, I mean, it, it's supposed to represent a car hauler, call hauler. There we go, that snaps down properly. And of course we've got our guns. It's supposed to represent a car hauler, but it is somewhat of an oddity in that respect. You will not fit a vehicle in here, so that's one thing to know. It's not like these open up. You can probably put something on top, but the way they show this in the illustrations is that actually goes on the, uh, where, where the gun's going to be placed. But this is the vehicle configuration shown in the instructions. All the wheels roll. The, the middle's still managed to catch, maybe not as much. And overall, I think it's fine, especially in reference of the series that this vehicle mode represents. It's definitely Cybertronian looking. Uh, it does have cues to Earth vehicles. It is, well, somewhat well-structured, somewhat loose. Uh, I mean, this all relies on a lot of little snap points on here, and this is a bit of a thin section, but if you do the shake test, nothing's coming loose. It's just a little, little flexy. I think that might be the best way to word it. But overall, I think it's pretty good. I have one minor gripe uh, about this vehicle mode. I mean, of course, it would be impossible to turn this thing since there's no uh, trailer able to turn. But the way the feet are back here, and they, they don't really show you pictures of the feet on the back, since we have this built-in uh, pivot, it just, it's not great. And I have not been able to get it to go any flatter. I think that's as, as good as it gets. So you will have this tilted back. Not a deal breaker for me, but it would have been nice if these could have gone completely level with everything else. I think it would have just been a little bit better integrated. But let's pop this off and just talk about the locations that we can snap on accessories quickly. So we have one peg hole in the front. We have the two that we just pulled out from. Another one here, another one back here. Then we have two up here. You could probably utilize this one inside here. Probably could use this one. And so that gives you quite a few points that you could add weapons from the series to really arm him up. Throw these on here for a quick example. So it will be definitely a warrior tractor trailer. Oh, there it is. But you could arm this thing up. Has a pretty good play factor. Overall good look. I think superb robot mode. And before we go, this thing has my vote. It is a little expensive size for its size, but considering the aesthetic we get and the transformation, I personally think it's worth it. Uh, but one thing I just want to throw out there, some people who may have thought about getting the uh, perfect effect semi-truck that is for the Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus, since these cabs are somewhat close, and I'm going to pull this off. All right, so that does not come out too easily, but can get it out. It's hard to get that out cleanly, anyway, and keep the transformation. So, we've got these two trucks here. 
just to show you the size, this one is bigger, but not by a whole lot. And I think the back is pretty close. So the one thing I want to try, uh, since we have this on camera, is if this could sit on here. And honestly, there's nothing really supporting it from down here. So it does not really fit. Um, I was just thinking along the lines, if you had the perfect effect, Ultra Magnus Corbot, if this is something that someone might be able to try to experiment with, though I don't think it's going to work for that. But as is, as a complete set, I don't think this really needs a whole lot more. I think it's, pre it's pretty excellent looking. Uh, it's very fun. Love the form factor. Love this new line. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think about this new Ultra Magnus. And we'll see you all next time.